Okay, in this video, we are going to look at building a push button switch debount circuit using a CPLD. Now, that's programmable logic. Now, normally, when we build a hardware debound circuit, we use a very common set reset flip flop using NAND gates, and that's probably the best debound circuit. Or we could use a non inverting buffer as a very simple set reset flip flop. But in these two circuits, we need a single pole double throw switch, push button switch. Now, if you want to use a single pole single throw switch, we would use the inverter RC time delay that uses a resistor and a capacitor uh, to create a time delay. Now, when we're using a CPLD, we could also use a, a time delay, but instead of using an RC time delay, we'll use a low frequency clock, and that will be our delay. So you can see my little breadboard. I have a, I have a push button switch, and I have a flip flop circuit, a toggle, and, and it's set up as in toggle mode. And this is the best way to test. Uh, debound circuit. So right now I have this switch direct, directly connected to the flip-flop so there's no debound circuitry. So we could actually watch uh, the debounce on this LED. So it should toggle off and on every time. So I'll uh, right there, it, uh, it, it failed right there. You can see I, I pressed it and it didn't, it didn't toggle over. I'll do it again. Right there again, failed. Toggled. Right there again. So you can see there's, there's bounce on this switch. So what I'll do, I'll hook it up to the CPLD and, and we'll try it again with a debount circuit. Okay, I have my push button switch connected to my CPLD board and I have a little debount circuit on my uh, CPLD and then it's feeding the flip-flop circuit. So now we should have a clean toggle on our flip-flop circuit. So I'll toggle the LED. You can see every time I press it, I'm getting a clean toggle. So my, my debound circuit is working properly on my CPLD. So we'll have a look at the schematic that I'm using on the CPLD. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I programmed into my CPLD for my debound circuit for my push button. And anything outside the dotted line is external. So you can see my push button switch and my pull-up resistor to 3.3 volts. Now inside the CPLD I have three D flip-flops and they're cascaded together to form a shift register. And the output of each flip-flop, the Q output, are fed into a three input AND gate. And all the three clock inputs to the D flip-flops are tied together and they're being fed with a 190 Hz clock. Now that 190 Hz clock is my low frequency clock and that's what's going to give my time delay. So in one period of 190 Hz, it's 5.2 milliseconds, that's from there to there. So in two periods, it'll be 10.4 milliseconds, and I'll be from there to there. Now in 10.4 milliseconds, we're going to have three leading edges of the clock. And three clock pulses is what's going to feed anything through this shift register. So if we get a zero at this D input, so if we're not pressing the push button, we get a, D, we get a zero at the D input. After three clock pulses, that zero will be, will be here, and we'll have zero, zero, zero on the AND gate, and we'll have the zero on the output. Now when you press the push button, we're going to get a high on the input of the D flip-flop. Now let's say there's no bounce. So after three clock pulses, we're going to get a 1, 1, 1. And we'll have 1, 1, 1 on the end gate, and output will go high. So after about 10 milliseconds, after we press the button, this output will go high. But now if we have bounce, we press the push button, we have bounce. Every time we have bounce, we're going to clock a zero into the shift register. And anytime there's a zero in here, it's going to disable this end gate. So if you have a zero on any one of the Q outputs, that will be any one of the inputs to the end gate we're going to have a zero on the output. It's going to disable this AND gate. So when, this, when the bounce stops and we get a clean one going through all three all three flip-flops, then we're going to get a one, one, one on the AND gate and the output will go high. So as long as it's, it's bouncing, we're not going to get an output. And, and when the bouncing stops and we get three clean pulses and we get three ones on the AND gate, output will go high. So that's basically how we could do it on a CPLD using a clock for our delay. Okay, I have Cordis 2 running on my computer. Now this is the free download from Altera's website. So this is my software that I use to build my circuits to upload to my CPLD. So all I have to do is drag and drop components onto the screen, wire them up, and then program into my CPLD. Now you can see on the screen I have my three D flip-flops. That's my shift register. And there's my three input AND gate that's connected to the outputs of the three D flip-flops. And on the very left, I've configured pin 75 on my breakout board 
to connect to my push button switch and my pull up resistor. And on the very right, pin 71 is my debounce output. Now on the very bottom, you can see an LPM counter. That's going to generate my 190 Hz low frequency clock. On my breakout board, I have a 50 MHz clock, and that comes in on pin 12. And that's input into this LPM counter. Now the counter will divide the 50 MHz by 263,158, and that will generate my 190 Hz clock into, into my shift register. Now if you're, if you're using another board, if you're using your own uh, CPLD, you could use a simple 555 timer externally and feed it into the CPLD into the shift register. Now once the circuit is up and running and it's working properly, then you could copy and paste this part of the circuit for multiple debounce circuits. Okay, now you know how to build a debounce circuit using a CPLD. And this is the board that I'm using. It's a CPLD from Altera. It's a Max 2 series, the EPM 240T100. And they're available online and they're pretty inexpensive. So this is the CPLD here, it's got 100 pins, and all 100 pins are broken out into these headers. And it has a power connector, input power, has a 3.3 volt regulator that feeds the CPLD, and has an on-off switch. Now there's a JTAG here that we can plug in a USB blaster to upload your circuit into the CPLD. And here's my 50 MHz clock, which I can feed into the CPLD and divide it down and use it internally. Now what I like about CPLDs is you don't have to worry about parts count because you could use all those logical functions inside the CPLD and you only have one IC. Now when you start using CPLDs and get very familiar with them you'll never go back. So I hope this video will show you how easy it is to get started with CPLDs.